dungeon synth or just music that goes beyond the borders of metal anyway, including a lot of synthesizer music that is often known as dungeon synth, even though some people might say it's closer to some kind of ambient. Uh, this is Wild Taya, which is with the W, and uh, it means basically Wanderer. And uh, it's been always a uh, side project of Kalman Kanta, a guy who already has quite a lot of band activities. I mean, Kalman Kanta alone has dozens and dozens of releases. And of course, he has plenty of other bands. I say, of course, because, well, certain people are just like that, wired differently. And uh, Waldaya is this side adventure which takes you into the world of dungeons and music, mostly remind you the that the kind of music you get to enjoy because you just love the certain atmosphere the use of minimalistic ways of keyboards and all that stuff now i'm gonna not i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna say i'm a big fan of dungeons because mostly i'm not when i go for instrumental music i go for soundtracks or very very minimal dark ambient dungeons it is something that falls between these two and also uh synthwave synthwave which sometimes tends to be right up my alley now that doesn't mean i consider like this kind of music wrong or i'm saying like it's not worth it i'm just saying i'm not exactly the core audience but you might be especially if you're into whatever person did after you know cease to do the music with the first metal album and all now here on uh, patient omega band camp you get to see a lot of the stuff uh, that the same fella has been doing and this means way beyond just wild Eye, but wild Eye is basically the stuff you will get to see here as you can already see lots of wild Eye names mentioned but also void wind which is the kind of a more ambient like uh, sidetrack of this whole project but basically as you can see patient omega while they avoid wind they're all coming from the one and the same tree just different branches and all now this is very fresh from the oven from the standpoint when i'm doing this review that is um 20th of uh, april 2024 but here you can see it's already been originally released in 2023 so this is a little bit old when it comes to the physical product but that's sometimes how things go these days a lot of activities a lot of bands lots of artists first release things on digital like bandcamp and whatnot and then later on they go for a physical product which is a great thing if you just happen to be a collector or lover of uh, physical stuff i mean especially in the days and era when just suddenly digital stuff can be taken offline and then what you have in your collection is the only thing that matters in terms of listening to the music. Now, Beholding the Ruins of My Kingdom is only made of four tracks, but they are also lengthy one, more than 10 minutes each, meaning it's a full album for sure. Almost 50 minutes in total, something like 47 if I remember correctly. And that is a journey, very much like what Burson was doing with Hills Hjalf and uh, Daudi Balders. But I would say Wilda is actually a better version of that stuff. There are a lot of similarities. There are not major, you know, orchestrations happening. There are no major melodic patterns or whatever. It's very, very simplistic. It's almost like a soundtrack to a, say, video game or maybe some kind of art movie. But for me, coming from 80s and 90s video game kit, I mean, I still play, but the music was different. So this could really be a soundtrack to some kind of adventure game. I'm thinking mentally something along the line of Zelda and whatever. So kind of a, something thing like adventure game, role-playing game, open world, whatever. You're not talking about certain subgenres. This is the kind of stuff. So it's kind of a soothing. It's taking you in a mental trip where you just go through the golden fields, uh, lush green forests and all that stuff. So in a way, it's very, very beautiful and it's very soothing. But if you're expecting something important to happen like massive orchestration or important spoken parts like say later um, Dungeons and Burzum albums or something along those lines like dramatic changes then you're gonna get disappointed but I'm saying this is basically for the very core audience who like Dungeons and to begin with is it the best out there 
Well, surely not. Is it the worst out there? Of course not. So I would say if you're a big fan of Mortis, Bursum, and those smaller names uh, in the same genre, this is definitely worth checking out. And like said, if you prefer the physical format, those beautiful uh, glossy digi back, I think it's definitely worth owning. This is out from Misanthropia Records, and the rest of the information you can pretty much figure out from the Bandcamp link provided in the description box. Now off you go, check out the music, and if you like it, buy it. Take care.